Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report Special Report. There is no collapse because the collapse has already happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. In our next exhibit, we're going to now look at where was the dollar in all this? What was happening in the dollar when all these other things were happening? Well, I'm going to tell you that there is no dollar because the dollar has been replaced. I repeat, the fiat currency known as the U.S. dollar has been replaced. Has not been replaced with dinars, has not been replaced with any other uh, of these things you've heard about, not bitcoins, none of that stuff. All right? It has not been replaced with something far more nefarious and we're going to break that down as the series progresses but right now you're looking at a chart of the US dollar index futures contract and this right here is the 1990s okay you're looking at 1990 right now okay this right here this bar right here as you can see on the screen is December the 15th of 1989 so here we are in the 80s. Notice how high we were. We were at 103.82 as of the week of September the 8th of 1989. As we get into the 90s, you can see we're, we're leaving this bull market down to a bear market. So we're leaving a strong dollar policy to now a weak dollar policy. Compare and contrast. Here is one month. Here's the next month. All right. This is where we're headed. This is what they do. This is how we roll. Now, one other thing I want to show you here, if I can get it to the way I need it to look here on the screen. All right. Okay. Um, let's see here. We're okay. So this is January of 1990 okay and here is where we finished in 89 this is December of 89 and then we're starting January here now let's move forward a little bit okay alright now as you can see this this bar is January of 90 this bar right here is August of 90 okay so here we are this is good old 1990. We stayed in the range of, we'll say, 93 to 85. All right. Well, question for you. Where are we today? Hmm. 9567 as I'm doing this video. That's where the U.S. dollar is. Very interesting, isn't it? So, you can see not a lot has transpired has it I beg to differ check this out all right as we move on beyond August of 1990 and get into um, September October and November of 1990 do you recall what was happening during this time for those of you old enough to remember well guess what we had the first Gulf War that's right, ladies and gentlemen, the Gulf War, followed by a U.S. recession. And that lasted from between 1992 and 1994. U.S. recession. But right now, this is pre-recession. This is the Gulf War. Dollar is doing what? It's getting even weaker. Look at these prices. Look, we're at the 81 handle. All right, this is 1990. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, weak dollar policy. All right? Weak dollar policy. Falling from the end of 1989 where we were at 103, 104, and here we are at 81. All right? All this represents that Gulf War kicking off of 1990. 1990 is your Gulf War. All right? Interesting weak dollar going down okay the only thing that could save us at this point would be some type of a war wouldn't you agree well check this next line out after the um 
after the war is pretty much over and done with, and they say we came, we saw, we conquered, and with little resistance, what happens? <laughs> we go right back up to where we were. War saved the day. And again, now you're st we're still an old economy. We're an old re old economy. All right. I'm showing you the when, and I'm showing you the why, and then we're going to get to the how the dollar was replaced. So here is the when we were under the old the old paradigm, under the dollar, under the paper fiat currency and one thing to be pointed out is that this time too there was no such thing as a credit score there was no FICO score all right no FICO score no FICO score no credit report none of that stuff and interest rates were like 22% 18 19 20 22 percent okay so here we are this is that era all right now we're getting a stronger dollar all right king do dollars is flexing its muscles after we went over there and 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 kick sand all over the place here we are now with a stronger dollar at home but wait it gets even better by 1992 the recession is in full swing and here we are dollar going back down now we're hitting a new low here we are now at uh, the 78 handle okay broke broke, broke that that old support of 81 and we go down in the 78 handle full flown recession the US is in right 1992 good old 92 but now peep this we get even stronger look at us we're getting strong again right now by 1994 as things are kicking off we're in this recession here and the dollar is steadily getting stronger because of the the, the new oil situation that's being uh, kicked off in the Persian Gulf all right then here we are we're correcting now we're in 94 here all right now we're into the start and the beginning of 1995 and we come back down here to this good old 81 ish handle remember the 81s here we go again all right and then something interesting begins to happen ladies and gentlemen it's the go go 90 okay so if we look here we can see that we're looking now at the beginning of the go go 90s once you get into 95 and above that's when things really start to get interesting all right 95 and above here we are here comes this tech age starting to take off, starting in the telecom sector and um, this talk about the internet, um, having an internet starts to take off. This is when um, cable companies start talking about um, also getting in on it, on, on the act and having um, more of a play, you know, having, having internet through them and having it instead of it being dial up you can have it through your cable lines this is the beginning stages of talks about that all right all this stuff coming into into play all right technology taking off here's the dollar starting to strengthen up a little bit and then something interesting happens we get even higher we're getting back up to par now now we're in 97 this is May 97 look at this May 97 getting stronger oh look at this May 90 now we're in August 97 what happens we break par we back over a hundred look at the market Uh oh now we're staying above a hundred not even moving just oscillating between 102 and 100 look at that and you, you this is from January of 98 until let's say looks like July of 98 all right and we're continuing on here all right we fall off here and same year 98 only to strengthen back up and hit new highs and 99 remember the 1999 you had the Y2K uh, thing going on 
oh, all the computers are going to crash come Janu um, January 1 of 2000. Okay. Y2K. Big scare. Telling you about, you know, the machines crashing, blah, blah, blah. Preparing you for something. Preparing you for a crash. For the end of the world. For calamity. Okay. That's what you were told. And then look what happens. The year progresses. Here we are now in December of 1999. What happened? The dollar fell precipitously. Got all the way down here to the mid-90 handle and came back up above par again. As we get toward the end. How do you have a strong dollar if you say Armageddon is coming? You would think that back here in October of 99... You know, that we would have continued to see uh, crash and get going into 2000, leading us all the way up to 2000. That's not what's happening. The dollar is powering up instead. Hmm. If the world's coming to an end, January 1 of 2000, why did the dollar bottom out here? In October of 2000, you would think that a much weaker dollar would be in play if the world was coming to an end. Now, this was being hyped by mainstream media and all types of, um, you know, intelligent people, per se. The scientists, the trusted good old scientists that we trust so much was telling us how the end of the world was going to be and how terrible this was and people are going to be dying, there are going to be dead bodies in the street, um, all your loved ones that are on life support in the hospital and re rely on machines and things, they're just going to drop down dead because the machines are going to turn off you're not going to be able to keep them on this is a calamity congress needs to do something we need to have the smartest minds and this is what you were told this was um a very powerful psyop going dating back to 2000 or i should say right before 1999 preparing you for the millennium there was chaos and calamity saying that 2000 the age of Aquarius the turn of the century the new millennium was going to be catastrophic if we didn't do thus and so people spent tens of thousands of dollars in dried food and things of that nature and prepping this is the the uh, the origination of uh, of a of a systematic prepper mentality preppers have always been around but this is where it really became mainstream was right up in here okay look what happens 2000 rolls around ta-da nothing happens and the dollar screams to new heights this is where things really get funny look at this the dollar just takes off no problem. Look at that. No problem. All right? No problem at all. Strong dollar. Here we are in 2000. Now, I want to show you something now. While this dollar is getting stronger, something nefarious is happening in the stock market. Its chart doesn't look like this. It looks something totally different than this. All right, around this time, starting from December of 1999 up to let's get here March. We'll start here from this from this bar here to this bar here. Okay, for these four or five weeks right here, doing this time right here, right in here, in between meetings, the Federal Reserve started lowering interest rates. It lowered interest rates multiple times in 2000. All right. When you lower rates, you're trying to um, make it easier for people to spend money and things of that nature, right? Okay. And the, and the, the, the claim was we want to cool off the economy. 
What do you mean cool off the economy? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. If you want people to, to, to cool off and you want them to stop spending, you raise rates. Make it harder to spend. You don't lower them, making it easier to borrow and spend. That's just common sense. But look at this chart. Something's happening. Something is happening here. And it ain't pretty. All right? During this time, you had what people thought and what they were told to believe was the popping of the technology bubble, the tech sector implosion, where multiple startup stocks and things of that nature went to zero. They blew up. They went. They started from zero overnight and went to hundreds of dollars, some even thousand dollars, and then they went to zero. All right, people went. Companies were going out of business, right and left. The Nasdaq hit five thousand and then retreated, and people start crying and saying, "Oh man, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was getting into." And they were calling for what? What was the public outcry? Government intervention. We need more government. Government, 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 save us, help us. We need a big brother. So during this time, as a result of this right here, big brother comes in and says, you know what? You're right. Pattern day trader rule is in effect. There was once upon a time when your trading where people were trading and having fun and doing things with their money you could open an account for five hundred dollars at Charles Schwab and you could day trade in and out of a stock a thousand times in a day and it didn't matter it did not matter I repeat it did not matter okay you didn't have any margin requirements and all that other stuff it was your money you want to go in there and gamble with it go for it I'm serious that's how it was there were um, Back in the early 80s, we had what is called arcades. And in an arcade, you could go there and play all types of video games and pinball machine games. And that's where you went. That's where you had your Pac-Man and your Q-Berts and a whole bunch of other things. Well, during this time here, during this age, we had other type of arcades. We had trading houses, trading rooms where... Uh, companies, you know, you come in, you open an account, and you, you, you can trade. You set it a terminal and trade, and day trade stocks all day long in and out. All right, people were cashing their inheritance, and do, they did all kind of crazy things. And they were go, and they would trade, and say, oh, look how I got rich day trading the market. It was absolutely ri ridiculous. Yes, just like you have Starbucks today, coffee houses, you had trading houses, if you will, they were just like Starbucks. There was one on every corner, multiples in every city. It was hilarious. All right, and that's what these places were. You can go in, you can go in, open an account, sit down, trade all day. All right, that's what it was. And during this time, you had the rise of the prop firms too. Everybody was a trader. Everybody was a genius until now, until here. This is where the genius stopped. All right. And something else began. So here we are. We're in the early. We're in early 2000. Now here we are in, in September. Look at look at this. Look at this dollar strengthening. But I thought I thought the the, the U.S. economy was um, was imploding. I thought the stock market was. I thought the the Nasdaq uh, was imploding. The tech sector was going belly up. What, what's happening? How is it that the dollar now? Is hitting 120. Unbelievable. The euro's not even trading at 120 right now. This is unbelievable. Actually, the euro's at 112 as we do this video. Look at this incredible king dollar. This is amazing. Unbelievable. This was going, and here we are, we're about to close out 2000 and now enter into 2001. And look at this. Look at this. Strong, muscular, six-pack ab dollar. Look at this. King dollar. Incredible. 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 Power. Okay? Look at this. And it extended well over, well, well in the hundreds. Here we are now in March of 2001. Here we are. 
still king dollar in full effect. Here, here we are here at, at, at 121. All right, and this is uh, July of 2001. Incredible! Look at this long-lasting bull market. Look right here. Bull market is just. It's still here. It's it's alive and in full effect. All right, we're still up in the teens, the one teens, and here we are now. All right, let, let's go back. Okay, here we are. We come we come off of one twenty one. This is July of two thousand and one. All right, here's August. Okay. All right, now let's start right here. Here we are. The week here's here's nine eleven. Here's that 9-11-ish right here. Here's the 9-11-ish. All right. Notice how the dollar, when they reopened the market, didn't do anything. It didn't do a darn thing. It did nothing. How is that possible? Doesn't make any sense. This is the week of 9-11. Here's the dollar the week prior, okay, in the one teens. Here's that week of 911. We're still a, we're still uh, above 110. All right, we're in one preteens, and then we rally and take off again. Interesting. What happened here? Very interesting. It's almost like they didn't care. Why is that? Why is that? And then we go back to where we were. Interesting. And then it goes back up again. And now here we are. And the 120s again. And now, here we are in 2002. Okay? 9-11 is forgotten. It's, it's, it's a thing of the past now. Interesting what's happening and what's transpiring. Now, here's the point I want to get to. And I'll pick it up in the next video because this one has gone over. The time just flies. Uh... The next video, I'm going to get right to the point. I'm going to show you the replacement of the dollar.